Hello and welcome to module 17, building a small network. All right, so, um, okay, as the reminder, I have to always say that, don't forget to take notes, the notes that I asked you to at least, and submit that as homework. All right, so let's, let's start. Okay, so let's look at small network topologies. Topologies is very easy to connect. You typically you connect your users to the switch, and from the switch it goes into the router. For a small network, you typically connect it either to a DSL, a cable, or Ethernet connection. So it's very simple connection. There's no no biggie about that. You know, connecting to a switch, it could be that switch could be your wireless router X, either a physical switch or a wireless switch. All right. Let's talk about the device selection, which is more. Let's say you have a little bit more than, you know, something close to 20 to 50 users. All right. So, number one, when it comes to device selection, I want you to write this down. You're going to think about the cost. How much is it going to cost you? How much is your client is willing to spend? You're going to think about speed, the type of ports. Do you want fast Ethernet, which is 100 megabits, or gigabit Ethernet? which is a thousand megabits. You got to think about scalability, which means expandability. Is the, are, are they going to expand? How, you know, what are, what are they, what are they thinking? Okay. Because you don't want to make it small enough and it's very difficult to expand. And uh, so again, you get all that information from your client and the operating system features. Do you want voice over IP features? Do you want uh, security fe features where you can set up, VPNs and IPSs and things like that. All right, so you wrote, now we're going to talk about the IP addressing for a small network. All right, think about how many subnets are you going to create? And that's true, by the way, for wired or wireless. And uh, subnets all depends on the different departments. So you think of, or, you know, so if you are in a specific department, you're going to be in that subnet, or it could be on the type of work that you do. If you are a manager or if you're a salesperson or if you are an engineer, you could be in a different subnet. So you, you decide. The more subnets, of course, the better because each subnet is, it will have its own VLAN, which we'll discuss uh, later on, um, and so on. So decide on how many subnettings you are going to need. And then next thing, write this down also. Redundancy. Make sure... That you have backups, redundancy, I'm talking about extra links, right? And you may have extra routers in here. I'm sorry, servers, extra switches, redundant routers in case one fails, the other one picks up immediately. Same thing with switches and extra links. All right, so we'll be doing this throughout this course. Um, how to make sure that we have redundant links, redundant switches, and redundant routers as well. All right, so redundancy is extremely important. And you also now, you got to think about traffic management. So write this down. With traffic management, you have to be able to support real-time communication, such as voice over IP and streaming video. You want to use quality of service QoS to set priority queuing for packets, right? So that's important. You know, it's not always automatically. So you have to have a router, for example, that will support QoS. Maybe a voice over a voice router um, that has those features. Okay, so now we're talking about a small network applications and protocols. So the network applications, such as you know, there's some of them are network aware, such as DHCP, Telnet, SSH, or SMTP, and there are the application layer services, not network aware, such as the Ethernet NIC or the 802.11 NICs. Okay, uh, the common protocols that you're going to be using is HTTP, HTTPS, DHCP, FTP, Telnet or SSH, right? Uh, you want to think about voice, voice over IP or video conferencing. I know I said that before. You know, what's the difference between voice over IP and IP telephony? IP telephony is dedicated wiring to your service provider. You don't send you don't send data or anything else other than voice on those wires. 
uh, but it uses they all encapsulated in IP packets, so you get much better quantity of service. Uh, voice over IP, you're using it over the uh, your cable modem along with video and data going out, so you may have um, less because it's not dedicated. Um, you may, it's, it may not be as good as the IP telephony. You got to think about the bandwidth if you're going to do video streaming. So if you're thinking that you're that corporate that organization that you're gonna you're working for want to do video uh, conferencing, so you may need bigger bandwidth. Just think about this: uh, uh, you need a minimum of 10 megabits per second for MP4 video streaming. With you know you have, you have to have at least clear, dedicated 10 megabits per second for MP4 um, videos. All right, so that's that. Let's look at scalability, okay? For the growth of the network, number one, write this down. You need network documentations. And what I mean by that, device inventory, the budget and traffic analysis. And for that, you may use, for example, the SNMP protocol, the simple network management protocol. Uh, you need... Uh, Protocol ana a analysis, you know, determine the traffic flow patterns is very important. Uh, employee network utilization uh, over a period of time. So you need to know that. So please write those down as well. All right. So you check that out. Now, um, so you can use the, the employee network. You, you want, before you expand, you want to see how everybody is doing, right? What are they using? How much bandwidth do they need? So you can expand easily without any protocol. You can use protocol analyzers to do that for you. Okay. All right. Let verify connectivity. So the first thing you want to do before you even think about extend expanding is you want to use the, the extended. The, you can use the ping and the trace and the tracer command, but you can always use the extended ping. The extended ping, just type ping, P-I-N-G. And hit enter, and it will start asking you questions to, there you go, the extended ping. And it will, you know, you have, you, you can have a lot more parameters that are included. And it will give you a better insight about the connection. Same thing with trace route. Or trace it if you're typing in on a PC, you type trace out on the router. All right, that tells you how many hops you're going through. So the stars is telling you you lost connections. This is successful, but as soon as you left this hop, your network failed, right? Control C, by the way, if this is, keeps going forever, just do Control C and you interrupt the command. And that's almost true in Linux as well, Linux um, operating systems. All right, uh, so you can verify with trace route, extended trace route, you can use baselining all right so please write this down uh network baseline which is you taking a picture of how the network operates maybe over a day a week or even months uh you can use copy of the pings trace error messages results of third-party network baseline software all of that so you want to take you want to know what is normal in terms of traffic and you may use that information for uh, an anomaly based um, IPS system, an intrusion prevention system, so that the IPS knows what's normal and what's not before it can, you know, flag traffic that is coming in as as a, as a, it's going to compare it with the baseline, and if it's an anomaly, it will flag an alert, right? All right, so now let's look at some commands that you're going to use. IP config slash all you would use that to find out what's your MAC address, for example, in addition to the IP configuration. IP config release and renew. If you want to get a new IP address, you want the DHCP server to renew your IP address. You can use IP config slash display DNS. IP can, you know, for the to do that also, you can use, uh, by the way, for, for Linux machines, you use IF config, right? So write this down. Number two. The ARP, um, the ARP command, that's going to show you all the IP 
and the MAC corresponding MAC addresses in the IRP cache. Okay, so you can I'll write this down. You can use the net interface IP delete our cache to delete the ARP cache on your system. Show running config, the running configuration file that's running in the okay, take a picture of this. You could do that. Okay, I don't have to write all of this down for you. Right? Um the show CDB, CDP neighbors command. Again, just write these. Uh, parameters that comes up along with it, the information that you get from the show Cisco discovery neighbors. Uh, if you're not going to use this command, by the way, please disable it because this is an attacker would use this to gather information about the neighboring devices. All right. Uh, show, for example, show protocol, show version, show IP interface brief. We'll practice all of these commands one way or another when we are doing exercises in class in our class activity. Here's your show IP interface brief. They can tell you up and up. Layer one, layer two configuration, right? All right, so let's take a look at some troubleshooting techniques. All right, I want you to write the following down. Identify the problem. Establish a theory of probable causes. Test the theory to determine the cause. Establish a plan of attack as plan of action and implement the solution. Verify the solution and implement preventive measures. Document your findings, actions, and outcomes. All right. Then you resolve or escalate or escalate. Sometimes if you can solve it, you got to make sure when is it the appropriate time to give it to your manager. The debug command, by the way, is important. Allow, right? You write this down also. The administ allows the administrator to display operating system processes, protocols, mechanism, and event messages in real time in real time for analysis. Make sure when you're done, you type no debug or debug all, because otherwise it's going to eat up your bandwidth. Number four, make sure you can use the terminal monitor to display log messages. This is if you are remotely accessing the device using Telnet or VTY, you use terminal monitor. All right, let's take a look at some troubleshooting scenarios. Number one, you got, you're writing this down. If you have du duplex operation and mismatch issues, okay, that means you got duplex and speed modes are always negotiated, right? Uh, IP addressing issues, uh, you can use show IP interface, show IP interface brief or IP config. Don't forget the APIPA command, right? If, if, if you typed IP config and you got this IP address that starts with 169.254, that means your DHCP server is down, right? Default gateways, okay? Um, the DHCP, the default, you can use show IP route, the IP or IP config or the ping command, always ping your default gateway to see if you're connected or not. The DNS, you know, the DHCP assignment of DNS, IP address, NS lookup, you can use manually place dns queries and analyze the dns response that's what the ns lookup is for right and finally you may use i know this is the end of the chapter but you can use the um the mdix the medium dependent interface crossover if it's not enabled to enable it make sure that the speed and the duplexes are set to auto the MDIX will allow you to use any um, type of cable, straight through or crossover. All right, it is de by default it's enabled on the 2960 and the 3560 switch switches, but not on the 2950. So if you need to do that, you got to do um, duplex auto, speed auto, and then the MDIX auto. We'll discuss that in another chapter as well. All right, so um, write everything down, like I told you, and that ends Chapter 6, 17, and I will see you in the next chapter. All right, don't forget to write your notes and upload them as homework.